You know, it's really funny. I made lots of jokes in the last couple of episodes about Nicolas Cage and not Indiana Jones and all the rest of it. But what's really funny is Lego now own the rights to Indiana Jones. There you go. This is actually Jonathan Johnny Thunder. His name isn't actually Jonathan, I don't think. I just made that up. But today, on LEGO Racers with TomTom94, Tom we're going to be tackling his circuit, which is circuit number four. And it's time to make a bit of a confession. Because I'm sure we're all wondering, ooh, what exciting new tracks are going to be lurking on circuit number four? Well, prepare to be disappointed. Yeah, so... What happens is, at the halfway point in the game, the previous three circuits actually get mirrored. This is why they don't turn up on time race, because if you had to do literally the same bullshit in reverse, I think people would have thrown the game into the fires of hell. It's still pretty fun, though. I think it's a nice, neat way of, you know, throwing us around. So our character for taking on Sir Jonathan of Thunder is a new guy I've made called Wiz Shades. You'll see he's using Veronica Voltage's chassis and quite a lot of her car set, but also some of Basil the Bat Lords as well, to show that we unlocked him the hard way. And we're just going to get started. Hey there. I have to warn ya. Me and my car are ready to win any race. But good luck anyway. Can't think who he's ripping off. So it's a slightly different experience for Johnny Thunder. He also likes to use the red pickups, but it's subtly different. Because while Captain Redbeard would tend to just fire them off quite randomly, Johnny Thunder tends to be more prepared and plotted. And in particular, he likes to use the grappling hook which is a very useful pickup for him because it can mean that he ends up leapfrogging you on the line if you're not very careful. He is also uh, set with a slightly higher handicap than Captain Redbeard. That is to say, he is slightly faster just generally. That was unhelpful of the warp turbo there. And I mean, if you notice, Johnny Thunder is quite a ways in front of the AI racers. That's partly because this is his home track and I think the AI is slightly biased towards that. Never really been able to work that one out. We'll do enough research, but yeah. Anyway, it's the same old deal in Desert Adventure Dragway. We've got the Sphinx open. I'm going to go for the Warp Turbo again. And I just like to bring one thing up that I mentioned I'd be bringing up way back in Episode 3, so it take take me quite a while to get to this, which I apologise. But now's a good time as any. The differences between cars. Now, the manual says that the heavier the car... The higher the top speed, don't ask how the physics of that work, and the better the handling. And and the manual also says that certain chassis have different stats. Now, I did a very cursory bit of research, and possibly you might say that the racing chassis has high acceleration and fairly low top speed. But apart from that, I've never noticed a single bit of difference using any of the particular chassis. So, just go with what looks best, really, for me. My character's now driving the wrong way. Oh god, why did I create this character? It's okay. It's okay, everything is fine. Nothing is the matter. Why am I in space? The main trick with the second run of circuit is just making sure that you don't go the wrong way which is very easy to do unfortunately what with you know muscle memory pulling you one way or the other uh, yep that's the one Mo most of the these circuits are a bit similar but I do think I've got enough stuff still to talk about, so it should be okay. I was considering speeding these circuits up and putting them to music, but I think doing that art immediately after the time race would be a bit much. And I think that there is still uh, plenty of stuff to talk about, particularly some of the AI races. In fact, we might as well bring up the AI races now, because there's a you know fair bit of variety between them, but it's quite interesting how they are essentially the same. Oh, damn it, I thought I'd fluked my way into getting the uh, shortcut there. The Their patterns are, you know, they, they follow a preset pattern, so they'll follow preset pickups. And one of the ways that the modding community, yeah, such a thing exists for LEGO racers, um, has done is to change the AI path set and to change the item placement so that the AI actually represents a credible threat. Which I think is rather cool in its own way, you know. 
towards it, their own way and make it better. And, you know, some of the some of the AI racers can actually challenge in the mid-game, particularly the ones on King Kahuka's circuit. Royal Royal King's path on Royal Knight's Raceway, for some reason, has a big chance of propelling him up into second or third. And, for some reason, of all the key people on Johnny Thunder circuit, I've always noticed Pharaoh's mummy tends to do quite well. Although he's not doing well here. And he came last in every race on Captain Redbeard's circuit, so I think that's going to be the case of the commentator's curse. Dark Forest Dash is a very, very easy one, particularly because it's also dark, to so forget which way you're meant to be going. Around this corner, and then it's going to be on the right. It's going to be on the right, it's going to be on the right, it's going to be on the right. Where is it going to be on the right? There. Um, shit. Yes. <laughs> that arrow hadn't been there. I probably would have got that wrong. It's... It, 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 it is muscle memory. It just completely throws you off, especially seeing as since you've done it in time race as well, you have probably gotten used to the whole idea. And Johnny Thunder has taken first place, which is annoying, because... Okay, fair enough. He had a grappling hook, and he chose to waste it on a shield when I had a turbo. So that will be the lead. Thank you very much. Or not. I'll just take him by the shortcut, shall I? Bye. I pressed the wrong button to uh, power side because I'm so used to spacebar, even though I deliberately changed it in the last video. This one's coming on quite nicely, actually. The one other thing I'd like to bring up about AI racers, while I sort of had the subject on my mind, is that the AI, some of the AI racers, the person that made me think of this was Robin Hood, have parts on their cars that you can't get. Robin Hood, Pharaoh's Mummy, uh, a couple of others have unique shields. The textures for which are in the game's data, but which you can't access. And there's a particularly obnoxious instance of that on Gypsy Moss slash Basil the Bat Lord circuit, which I'll get to when we get to that. But yeah, that's slightly frustrating. And But then there's also weird ones, like I think it's Islander. They obviously ran out of time because he doesn't have a unique shield just, and has a weird like medieval emblem on his car instead, which makes absolutely no sense when you consider that what he's meant, his character arc is meant to be. Character arc, character thing. You know, it's just, a, you know, a bit lazy there. We have now won the circuit, just like we did with Captain Redbeard, and there is absolutely no point in finish in racing, because we'll still get the point we need to win. Pharaoh's mummy comes in last. He... I don't honestly know what the concept was behind With Shades. I didn't really think about it much as I was making him. I just thought, what can I do to combine Veronica Voltage's car set, which is cool, and Basil the Batlord's car set, which is supernatural. So, this this was the result. My my character creation hasn't exactly been inspired this time around, for which I do apologise. I hope to make it up to you guys with the last couple. You'll know. You, you see, Johnny Thunder is definitely better than Captain Redbill. I don't know if I'm just get if I'm just being complacent or if he is much more. But he seems much more persistent to me, which obviously you would expect. However, he's not as tough as Basil the Batlord because Basil the Batlord can use many different pickups. You'll have, I'm pretty sure he used all the different colours in my race, whereas Johnny Thunder is obviously limited to only using reds and the occasional blue one for. I don't know, variety I guess? But the net result of that is that he's rather predictable and needs to defeat, and also he doesn't use the turbos, which, due to the poorly balanced power-up system, which I didn't say was poorly balanced, it did, yeah, he's not, he's not as tough. Which is a shame, because you'd expect the difficulty to keep scaling in a way, but there you go. It, and it doesn't help that we're back to easy tracks. Okay, so... Damn, I missed. I think... Can we go for the clean sweep? Can we get the clean sweep? Or is he going to take us on the line? Oh shit, this is going to be tight. And he's got a grappling hook. Damn it. No, we got it. We got the clean sweep. And then my guy used the grappling hook. There's irony. 
Ferris Mummy came last in all four races, and Robin Hood and Governor Broadside split the spoils. You can't make this up. And, Q drum roll. We can go adventuring! Ta da! Yes, we've unlocked Johnny Thunder's car circuit, and after three episodes, we finally have a new character on this screen. Ah, uh, I've been looking forward to that. And we will next time, we will be taking on our new friend. See you then.